while back, 20 plus years, I think, a French Canadian reporter got an interview with Fidel Castro, the dictator of Cuba. And <clears throat> French Canadians are not like people from France. <laughs> They're rather the opposite. They're straight shooting. Um, they don't mince their words. Um, they can be quite subtle, but generally they prefer to be blunt and straightforward. Um, and that's one of the things I really like about them. And the, um, the reporter was very much a French Canadian, uh, although he may have identified himself as a Quebecois. But the point was this reporter who had probably gone to great lengths and probably licked a lot of boots to get this interview, which I would assume would be every journalist's you know, jackpot interview, was 15 minutes with Fidel. <clears throat> he just tore right into Castro um, without any hesitation at all, and he didn't give a damn who he was talking to. And that, that that's quite that's quite Quebecois, I must say. <laughs> um, just straight to the point. Uh, your, your prisons are full of pr political prisoners. What the hell is the matter with you? Why do you have to arrest people? Why do you have to censor the press? Why do you have to do all this sort of thing? Um, you're an egomaniac. I don't understand, you know, uh, you know, this sort of thing. And everybody in the room when this was taking place, and of course Fidel is not going to have an interview without other people there, was aghast. You can't talk to Fidel like that. Um, Castro fancied himself a communist, but in any, many ways he was simply an old-fashioned Latin American caudillo, a strong man who was going to make something out of his society, and, um, you know, he's going to do good for his people, whether they approve of how he does it or not. Um, I think the Cuban people, when all is said and done, will have very great things to say about Fidel Castro, but that's going to be a while before that happens, I think. But Castro was taken aback in, and absolutely delighted. He, by all accounts, and the reporter emphasized this, by all accounts, Castro had never been so delighted in his life. Finally, somebody is telling me exactly what he thinks of me. Um, it had to be a foreign reporter, of course, because I can't have this guy shot or sent off to the Cuban equivalent of the Gulag. Um, and ultimately, he's really no threat to me. So this was perfect for Castro. Um, he loved, he loved every minute of it, the guy said. He was, he, he cleared his schedule for the next couple of hours after the interview was supposed to end and said, keep coming, keep telling me what an asshole I am or whatever, what a tyrant or dictator I am. Castro was getting the treat of his life. <clears throat> I understand that feeling. Um, I understand the feeling of someone telling you right to your face what they think of you, um, even if it's very negative. Now, this might sound a bit crazy, but my wife talks to me like that a lot. Not in a hurtful sort of way, though. You can tell that she's doing it in a way where she's going somewhere. Um, I always say I'm the world's most impossible man married to the world's most impossible woman. Um, and I need somebody to stand up to me. She needs the same thing. Um, if she's the kind of woman that if you allowed her to, she would use you as a doormat. And the fact that I refuse to allow her to do that, I think, is part of the attraction she feels towards me. And I don't get angry when she tries to dominate me or match wills with me or whatever. We both have almost a ridiculously strong will, by the way. <clears throat> almost dangerously strong willpower. Um, but anyway, the point is, you don't always want to be told nice things. Um, sometimes your enemies are your best friends. Your enemies can tell you what things that your friends won't tell you. Um, you know, I've made an awful lot of friends here on YouTube. Um, and a lot of the friends that I've made on YouTube are friends that you wouldn't really think I would have anything in common with. Um, as I said, a lot of them disagree with me utterly and fundamentally. But I appreciate the fact when they 
a lot of them will tell me, look, you, you know, you're full of it here. It's about time somebody, you know, was that blunt and straightforward with me. Um, I'm not saying that my YouTube friends go easy on me or anything like that, and I'd hope they wouldn't. But um, it's just normal human nature. When you sort of take to somebody on an intuitive level, you're inclined to be nice to them. And I think this is something that really irritates in Mendem. Um, I've seen so many people try to make friends with him, and he's just brutal with such people. Um, and in a sense, I, can, I get it. Like, I'm, I'm sorry that these people are, get damaged this way. Um, because it can be quite a come down when you think, ah, I finally found somebody who, you know, in a sense is my guru, and then your guru attacks you right where you're most vulnerable type thing. That's not fun, right? But the types of discussions that you have within Mandem, I hate to say this, but they're not for the weak of heart. Um, he's taken a stand that is uncompromising, and if you try and convince him otherwise, well, you know what you're going to get. And if he believes that human relations are all crap, if you try and form a relationship with him, he's going to attack you. Um, what do you expect? That's his nature to do this. It doesn't make him a bad person or anything. And for heaven's sake, you must have known that he was going to do this when you approached him. He doesn't try and hide his nature at all. Um... <clears throat> and as I've always said, I want a dissenting voice. I want somebody uh, to point out the flaws in my arguments. Um, I don't necessarily want people to agree with me. One of my favorite quotes in this line is by Patrick McGowan, who is the, um, the main actor in the 1960s British TV show The Prisoner, which in many ways, was TV's finest moment and has never been surpassed. Well, he, his the series, the 17-episode series, The Prisoner, was extremely controversial, and it basically ruined his career, but he didn't care. He knew what he was getting into. He was pretty sure it was going to ruin his career. Uh, he said, I wanted to have controversy, arguments, fights, discussions, people in anger waving fists in my face saying, how dare you? I understand that. Um, I get it. Um, and that's the same thing. It's, you know, you. Heraclitus said all things are brought into being by strife. Great things come about by clashes. And the thing is about YouTube is, or the Internet in general, you can clash all you want, but it doesn't really have any major effect, provided you understand what you're getting into here. And as I say, I think a lot of people don't really approach and mend them in the right way. Um, <clears throat> and I know, I know what, what that sounds like. <laughs> it, it sounds like I know what and is like, which is kind of ridiculous thing for me to say. But, you know, I, he has his uses. He will attack your arguments and pick them apart, and he will not spare your feelings. Um, you know, he, that, that is so obvious that it hardly bears mentioning, but it's a good thing to bear in mind at all times. Um, he's a very, very, very good foil. Um, would I ever try to make friends with him? Are you out of your mind? No. Um, but again, I, you know, you, you sort of got to know what you're getting into if you engage him or you approach him or anything like that. Um, he's going to set boundaries, and you cross those boundaries, and he's absolutely ruthless. Well, I've set strong boundaries with him, i.e., I keep my 10-foot pole out. Okay, so he's never really fundamentally frustrated me because I understand the dynamics, I think, of dealing with him. Um, but I would caution other people um, who... I'm not implying anyone in particular here. I know this is kind of a response to Pyro's video. But I'm not saying that any any individual in particular is fragile. But in Mendem is not for the fragile. Uh, you got to have a pretty thick skin to deal with him, and you have to you have to know how to approach him. But his mind is sharp as a tack, of course, and that's why people who vehemently disagree with him um, will still engage him because 
he is a treasure trove of brilliant ideas and brilliant um, expositions on certain points of view. Um, and that is extremely valuable. It was extremely valuable for Castro to hear the French-Canadian reporter tell him what a piece of garbage he was and what a dictator and a, you know, egomaniac and a alpha male gone amok and fake communist or whatever. It, it was extremely useful for Castro to hear all of this because he's just surrounded by sycophants all the time. Um, but again, Castro was in complete control of the situation. He could have kicked the reporter out at any moment. There was no way that the contents of the interview was going to get into the Cuban press. So, uh, And he would show all his underlings, see how strong I am? I have no problem talk letting people talk to me like this. But you better understand what you're doing when you do it. I'll let this reporter do it because he's going to get on a plane and go away. But you see, I'm stronger than you think because I can actually take a powerfully dissenting voice. Um, dissent, opposition, even vilification has its uses. Um, but again, know what you're getting into. Engaging in Mendham and a lot of the people that surround him is not for the weak of heart. Um, and I really, truly feel for the people that have been damaged by their failure, I guess, to recognize that. In any case, uh, better answer the phone. <laughs>